therefore, therefore, therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. Good. And shall do what? Flow together to what? The goodness of the Lord. Yes. I need you to see that there's a way for you to come in the house. Okay. Are you listening? Yes, sir. It shouldn't be all hard for the prayer warriors in the morning. Ooh, amen. I'm just telling you. It shouldn't be hard for the prayer warriors. They ought to, folks ought to be running and singing. I'd rather you interrupt them singing than you interrupt them for any other reason. Come on. Glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah. But see, you, uh, yeah. this is offering. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to know that you redeemed. You got to know that you care. You got to know God fighting your battle. And that'll change how you come into the sanctuary. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the house of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wine, for oil, for the young of the flock, for the young of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden. Yes. Amen. Now, wheat, everybody say wheat. wheat. Say wine. wine. Say oil. oil. Say young of the flock. Say of the herd. Of the, herd. the Lord said to me multiple streams of income. Yeah. Maybe you don't want it. Maybe you don't need it. But, but see, see, one of the things we learned, if you want to listen, if you if you want to be wealthy, you gotta have more than one income. See, but, see, 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 the wealthy have seven to ten streams of revenue. Okay, they're not relying on one thing. They listen, when, when one is slow, the other one's picking up. When this one's picking up, that's one's going at full speed. And, 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 and listen, there's all there's a continuum of revenue. Are y'all listening to this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. He says, and their soul shall be watered as a watered garden. This is what the Lord told me to do. He said, He said, tell the people to close their eyes and see what a watered garden looks like. That's what he said. Can, can, can we do this just for a second? I'm talking about five, ten seconds. Close your eyes. Think of what a watered garden looks like. Think about it. Think about it. So maybe your grandmama had a watered garden. Maybe, maybe somebody you knew growing up had a watered garden. Are you picturing a watered garden? Are you really picturing it? Okay. He said that's what your life is supposed to is supposed to look like. Their soul shall be as a watered garden. He wants the inside of you to look prosperous. If you prosper internally, he will prosper you externally. Are you all following this here? I'm going to stop right here. It says, and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. God wants to remove toil. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. But many of you know the scripture, Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. Proverbs 10, 22 in the uh, uh, NIV version says, The blessing brings wealth and adds no painful toil to it. I'm going to stop right there. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody needs to change the picture inside. You looking at thorns and thistles. And God wants you to see a watered garden. You looking at scarcity and lack. And God wants you to see goodness and blessing. So the Lord says, change the picture. Okay? Change the picture. Change the picture. Amen. 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 So at this time, I would like my ushers to get an envelope in every hand. Amen. I want to give the people of God an opportunity to sow into the word of the Lord. If you're watching us via live stream, amen, and you desire to sow into the word of the Lord today, I want to give you that opportunity. 
Amen. The Lord called it for me. He called it a crossover seed. Oh, wow. Where, where you go from toil to goodness. Where you go from lack to blessing. He said it was a crossover seed. The same way Simon toiled, but then ended up where he had more than enough. So much he had to start giving it to his friends. God says this is where he's taking us. It's called a crossover seed. Crossover seed. Amen. And so I want you to sow, sow your best. Sow your best gift to the Lord. Amen. And expect the good shepherd. Amen. Amen. To bring you into that abundant life. Amen. So if there's uh, uh, the woman of God is holding up the placard. If, uh, if you're in the tabernacle today and you're desiring to sow uh, uh, via technological device, you can sow on your smartphone. Uh, you can sell on Cash App at dollar sign New Covenant 2019. Or you can sell on, Ca on PayPal at paypal.me forward slash New Covenant Ministry. Amen. If you're desiring to sow by check, you can make that check payable to New Covenant Ministry. Amen. But be specific with your seed. Amen. Amen. We're expecting God to overflow. Amen. There are songs that will carry you through a day. Hey. There are songs that will carry you through a bad moment. Yeah. There are songs that will minister to a situation on your behalf. Yeah. Where you'll have joy while the enemy wants you to walk in chaos. There is something that can be released in you. Earlier this week, I was singing that, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. How many got that testimony today? He can't stop what's going on. I don't care how hard he try. I don't care how angry he get. He can't stop what's going on here. Right, right. The blessing the is on this house. Yeah. The favor of God is on this house. The mercy of God is on this house. The love of Christ Jesus is on this house. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is on this house. And it's on you. That ought to really make you excited. Amen. Amen. Somebody say delay no longer. Say it again. Say delay no longer. Every head bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you because we know that your word is anointed. Father, we pray that as we dive into your word, Lord, let us see truth. Lord, let us see you for who you are to us. Yes. Father, minister to us. Yes. Minister to every situation. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word is the standard. Yes. Lord, you said when the enemy comes in like a foot, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Yes. And Father, we declare your word is yes. the standard. Yes. And Father, we yes. thank you today. Yes. By faith in Christ Jesus, yes. we are new creations. Yes. And we thank you for it now. And we give you all the praise and glory. Satan, take your hands off God's people. Every son, every daughter must be set free. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of bondage, every spirit of oppression, every spirit of control, we break that assignment now. We bind and we loose in the name of Jesus. And we give you the praise and glory for it now. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 Turn with me very quickly to Revelation chapter 10. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. The Lord's been uh, uh, dealing with us here for the last several weeks, and I, I just have to continue to reiterate it because. Uh, you know, we were listening to uh, Dr. Jerry Savale uh, this past week and, and Prophet has brought something to me and I, I pondered it and I thought about it and I said, yes, I mean, it, it is definitely something we ought to do. And uh, one of the things is, is that when uh, the Holy Spirit ministered to Jerry, Dr. Jerry Savale about a particular uh, message that God had given him, he printed out what God had said to him and gave it to those in the ministry. And the reason he did that was so that this, these, the family of God, that the body which God gave him to steward, they would say the same thing. And when we're saying the same thing on one accord, 
power begins to break through in the room. The testimonies and miracles will begin to happen for those that receive the word. And so there's something we have been declaring and we've been declaring there should be delay no longer. And we're not done declaring it. And, right. and it has to be rehearsed uh, until we get that no matter what you see going on in your life right now, there shall be delay no longer. Yes. The angel of the Lord ministered this to John the Revelator in the book of Revelation. And so we have to understand when the angels decree from the mouth of God. You and I are commanded to take that word and decree it back to the Lord. And so the Bible tells in Isaiah 55 that his word will not return to him what? Void. So if we know that it won't return to him void, we have a duty to declare it. Are you with me here? He said his word won't return to him void. He said it will accomplish where he pleases and it will prosper in the thing whereto it was sent. So when you declare God's word, the word will minister to the thing. Yeah. And see, whatever thing that you're facing today, God says, when you speak his word back to him, he'll minister in that area. He'll cause that area to prosper. If it's been dry, he'll cause water to flow. If it's left, he'll cause provision to come. Are you listening to me? But we have to believe in the supernatural. And we have to believe in the power of God. Are you with me? So John the Revelator uh, comes into a divine uh, communication uh, with this angel. And Romans chapter 10 says, and I, or Revelation 10 says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swore by him that lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. Verse seven. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God, everybody say the mystery of God. The mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. Somebody say amen to that. So what we're declaring is there shall be delay no longer. We're we're declaring what the angel of the Lord said to John the Revelator. So I need you to declare that with me. Say there shall be delay no longer. Come on, say it again. Say there shall be delay no longer. Say it one more time. There shall be delay no longer. Again, that word delay has to do with the set time of opportunity that will not come to an end. Yes. Okay, whether that be salvation, if you look at it from a position of salvation, you understand that when God saved you, he healed you. Yes. You understand when God saved you, he prospered you. Hallelujah. When God saved you, he delivered you. It, it's already done because it is a finished work. Where? In Christ Jesus. Amen. And so what we have to understand is that he said, when this is sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be finished. Amen. And we looked at that one of the mysteries. Are you with me here? Yeah. We looked at one of the mysteries of God in Colossians 1:27, which declared Christ in us, yes. the hope oh. of glory. Now, you have to have this as under, I'm not moving on until you get it. You've got to understand that Christ is on the inside of you. So you don't, uh, you don't have to go through what you're going through. You don't have to put up with what you're putting up with. Because the anointed one and his anointing is on the inside of you. He says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And again, we have just 
spelled this out for the people of God. Everybody say hope. Hope, hope means the reasonable expectation for good. Yeah. You, you have to accept this as truth for you. That you have every day a reasonable expectation. Good coming out of this conversation. Good. Why? Because I'm not relying on myself. I'm relying on the word of the Lord. I'm relying on what God has said to me. So Christ in you, the hope of glory. Everybody say glory. Glory again means all of God's goodness. So every day you get up expecting all of God's goodness. No, you're not listening to me. God, God will send somebody to pay something for you. God will send somebody to your business to help my God get your business off the ground. God will be the one who speaks to somebody to come assist you. Jesus. In Psalm 115, tells us that uh, he says, fear the Lord. He is your help. And your shield. Now, if you believe, how many believe that? How many believe that God's your help? How many believe God is your shield? So not only is He going to assist you, He's going to protect you. This is the hope of glory that we've got to walk in every day. That you expect God to help you. That you expect God to send you help. Oh God, are you there? Okay. So what we're declaring is there shall be delay no longer. Yeah. One of the other prophetic words we're declaring in this house that God is exceeding our expectation. Yeah. You've got to have this because you're in Christ. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm in Christ. Yeah. Say it with some conviction. Say, I'm in Christ. Yeah. If you are in Christ, you have to expect God to work out things in your life. Yeah. Now, let me prove this to you. Because maybe you don't believe this. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Okay. Uh, amen. The Lord began to point this out to me. And we have to have this as truth. Amen. Mm, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> he said, know whose family you in. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you got to know whose family you in. Yeah, have right. you been adopted into the kingdom of God? Yeah. Have you, are you a spiritual son or daughter of the most high God? Yeah. Is he the head of your life? Yeah. You have to know whose family you're in. Yes. Yes, okay, this is critical for our understanding. Yes, it is. Ephesians 3 and verse 14. Glory be to God. For this cause, I bow my knees. Oh, God. Mm, let me go back up. Okay. So let me make sure you understand something. When God put the anointing in you when you received Christ Jesus, he gave you the authority to speak to the principalities and powers. I need you to listen with your spiritual ears. I just said something. When God put his anointing on your life, he, he anointed you to command things in the realm of the spirit. Okay, he gave you authority over demons and devils. He, he, he gave you the ability to speak to, listen, demonic beings and angelic beings. He, he gave you the authority to command the angel of the Lord to minister on your behalf. He also gave you the authority to bind up every assignment of the enemy coming from the second heaven. But you and I have to come into the revelation of this by the knowledge of the Most High God. That is also part of the mystery of God that is finished in you. Are you listening to me? Paul breaks this down in Ephesians chapter 3, and we'll only look at a portion of it. Look at uh, Ephesians 3 uh, and verse 9. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 7. He says, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints. Somebody ought to say humility. humility. Now, I mean, Paul wrote 13, 13 books of your Bible. <laughs> he also just told you that he said, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints. God used him to work miracles in the lives of God's people. God used him to, to, to minister on as far as handkerchiefs and aprons and people got healed. 
he, he, God used him, a man he was preaching to fell off the roof fell to the ground and broke his neck and God used Paul to go down and raise him up from the dead. I'm talking about someone who is now saying I'm the least, I'm the least of all saints. See, no, 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 no. See, we can't be normal about this. See, when God anoints you, it don't give you the reason to be proud. It don't, it don't give you the authority to start looking down on nobody else just because you see something and they don't. This doesn't give you the You're not listening to me. He says, listen, Lord, my God, thank you for the many revelations that you have poured out upon my life. But I still see myself as the least of all the other saints. If you think about it, before he even went to the disciples over in the book of Galatians, he stayed away for several years before he brought this word over to the disciples. Why? Because he wasn't sure if they'd receive him. Oh, why? Because of what he came out of. And see, oh, in the name of Jesus, don't allow, my God, the anointing to stop flowing based on what you come out of. God is going to use you, even if, my God, you don't look high on yourself. Guess what? God sees you the way he sees his son. And God's going to use you, and my God, he's going to use you for greatness. So what is your role in the matter? Be humble. Look at somebody and say, be humble. God's going to put a $100,000 in your bank account. Be humble. God's going to cause you to open up multiple businesses. Be humble. God's going to cause your family to come together. Be humble. God's going to heal your physical body. Be humble. No matter what you see God do in your life, always remain humble. Because he says, pride comes before fall. But God wants you to recognize if you be humble, he'll raise you up. This is why he said, listen, don't worry about what seat you're sitting in. Because if you're sitting in the back, guess what God's going to do? He's going to usher you up to the front. Don't come into somebody's church talking about, I need to sit up here and I'm on that seat. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know my title? Amen. Why? Because he said, if you'll be humble, he'll elevate you. He'll raise you up. Are you listening to me today? This was the anointing that Paul's walking. He says, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, this is grace given. Okay. Everybody say grace given. Grace given. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Yes. To make all men see. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. To make all men see. Amen. What is the fellowship of this mystery? Amen. Oh, I need you to pay attention here. Paul is saying, I need everybody to see this. This wasn't just for the bishops, the pastors, and those that, you know, wear fancy suits and long dresses. He said, this is for those of you that are sitting out in the pews, those, those that are parking cars in the parking lot, those that are, are, are making food and cleaning restrooms. He said, you can begin to declare this word because there is something God wants you to see. He said, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To the intent, everybody say the intent. the intent. To the intent that now to the principalities and powers mm -hmm. in heavenly places yeah. might be known by the church yeah. the manifold wisdom of God. Yeah. I need you to pay attention here. He gave the church wisdom. Yeah. My God, to proclaim to the principalities and powers the riches of this kingdom. I need you to understand what's going on here. He's saying to you that, listen, you don't have to allow the devil of scarcity and lack to control your life. I've given you the authority to tell life to get out of here. I gave you the authority to declare that God is the good shepherd. I, I've given you the ability to declare my word in Psalm 23 that tells us the Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. He, he's given you the authority to speak to principalities and powers. The wisdom of God. Christ is in you. The hope of glory. Are you here? Look at verse 11. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. In whom we have boldness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So you got to have this. Yeah. 
You're going to be bold enough to speak to something you can't see. Do you remember the sons of Siva? They thought that they could speak to devils and drive out demons and, and, and practice exorcism. And they said, and, and they said, listen, I, I speak to this devil uh, uh, by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Amen. How many understand? You better know the Lord for yourself. The Bible says that he, listen, that thing got up and, and, and made him get naked. And wounded him and ran him right out of there. Why? Because that, even that devil said, my God, uh, uh, Paul, Jesus I know, or Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? Now, now, what is the revelation here? You can't be hanging out with devils trying to drive them out. You can't be okay with living any old kind of way, and then as soon as somebody uh, uh, anointed come around, you start talking about, I rebuke that. Uh-uh, don't try to rebuke it now. You've been okay with it all this time. You're not going to talk to me. No, 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 no. You, you, this thing's got to be in you. It's got to be in you. So, so even if you don't have anybody to agree with, you can agree with the Holy Ghost. You can allow the anointing to be the witness. The one that's bearing witness with your spirit. That's why your Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? See, it's a mystery to the other people. Yeah. Right. Yes, it is. It's not a mystery to us. Yes. You know what's in you. Yeah. Rely on it. Right. You know what's in you. Yeah. Trust in it. Yeah. You know what's in you. Yeah. Be good with it. Yeah. That's part of the issue. We don't want to be good with it. Right. My God, because it. Oh. Yeah. We want everybody to be our friend, and we, we want to get along with everybody. Uh-uh. See, when you got the anointing in you, you need to let them go because it's better for them. Amen. It's better for them. That's not my message, but that is better for them. No, it is. I'm serious. It's better for them. Are, are you listening to me? According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Amen. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Verse 14, pay attention. Ephesians 3. Amen. For this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention right here. He says, listen, because most of the church doesn't understand this. Yes. Pay attention here. He says, this is the reason I'm bowing my knee. Uh -huh. because, because we haven't got tired of the enemy doing whatever he thinks he can do in our situation. We, we haven't come to the reality that we can rebuke that thing. We, we, we have to come to the realization that we've got power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and by no means shall anything hurt us. See, we're still thinking that what the devil's going to do is going to hurt us. See, people, are, you know, they'll try to convince you of this, you know, uh, you know, you'll never meet nobody else like me. You, you, you know, you know, people will tell you, you know, they'll threaten you like, you know, you, you'll never be anything if I'm not in your life. That devil is a liar. I, I came to tell somebody today, be bold in this season. Be confident in this season. Speak to the principalities and powers and tell the devil he ain't nothing but a liar. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the apple of God's God. Know that you are the cause. Know that you're a son and a daughter in Christ Jesus. See, the enemy will try to punk you. That's what he'll try to do. He'll try to say something knowing he can't do nothing about it. Are you listening to me? Okay, you, you don't believe me? Let me prove it to you. Go to 1 Peter. We're going to come back there, but let me prove it to you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The days of being bullied are over. We're not going to let our bills bully us another day. If, if bullying is outlawed at the school, it ought to be bullied in my house. Be outlawed in my house. Are you with me here? Your child right now, go to school. If they get bullied, they can call the principal. The principal's going to call you. 
That's right. See, we, we, we got to be done being bullied. I'm not, I'm not going to be bullied by lack. Yes. Uh, listen, God, I pray in the name of Jesus for the witty invention, the creative idea to break lack off of my life. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Name Are you with me here? Yes. First Peter 5. Likewise, you younger, in verse 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourself to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Be clothed with what? Be clothed with what? Humility. Be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace, come on, to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, where? Under the mighty hand of God. Why? That he may exalt you when? In due time. Verse 7, come on. Casting all your care upon him. Why? For he cares for you. What are we to do? Verse 8. Be sober. Come on. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. A lion with no teeth. He's, he's threatening but can't touch you. He's coming up against you but can't do nothing about the success. He's trying to stop you by making you stop yourself. This is why your confession is so important. If he can, he can get you to say something negative about yourself, gotcha. Your Bible just told you to be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, what does it say? Whom resist hath steadfast faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. One of the things we got to get over is thinking we're the only one going through it. See, we, we, see, you think, oh, oh God, how am I going to do this? Uh -uh. Stop looking at it like that. Look at it as an adversary, uh, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But, but really, he's a, 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 a dog with no teeth. He, he really talking big but can't do nothing. But really, you've got power over the enemy. Oh, listen, you got the anointed one on the inside of you. You can tell that devil where to go. Your Bible says submit to God. Resist the devil. And he must do what? Flee from you. Are y'all with me here? Yes, sir. Y'all got me preaching already. Who can resist steadfast in the face of the same affliction or accomplish your brother in the world? But the God of all grace, who's called up to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Somebody say amen to this. Go back to Ephesians chapter 3. Your Bible is telling you that the church has to be enlightened to the principles of the kingdom. Yes. Meaning you have the ability. Listen, how many know the original technology was words? Are you listening to me? The original technology, before you had a smartphone, there was words. Okay, before you had all the things you see now, if, if all of these things were created by a word. And God established everything by a word. Everything is currently where it's at because of the word. Are you listening to me? Okay, so this is important here. Look at Ephesians 3, verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit where in the inner man watch this that christ everybody say christ that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love 
So you need the anointing in you to be rooted and grounded in love. You need the anointing in you to be rooted and grounded in love. Jesus told the disciples, how will anyone know that you are my disciples? Except you love one another yes. as Christ has loved you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need the anointing to love. Yes. Is that not what your Bible just said? Yes. He said this anointing is in you by faith. Amen. Why? That you being rooted and grounded in love. Watch what happens when you allow yourself to be rooted and grounded in love. Wow. See, I'm saying something to you right now. Because I told you there should be delay no longer. Amen. See, I told you Christ got to be on the inside of you for this to manifest. Okay, I'm showing you here that see, Christ got to be in you so that you can speak to principalities and powers. What else am I saying to you? I'm saying to you Christ has got to be in you so that you be bold enough to receive the love. I'm saying something to you right now. You've got to reach a point where you receive the love. Why? Because there's something that's going to break out for you. Oh, God, pay attention here. Watch this. He says... He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend something. Amen, amen, amen. See, if you don't receive Christ in your heart and be willing to receive love, you won't understand something. Oh, pay attention here. Are y'all still with me or what? Pay attention to this because I'm seeking to open the eyes of our understanding as it pertains to Christ in you and love prevailing in you. It's going to unlock something in your life that has not been unlocked. Amen. Oh, I need you to pay attention here. This is why you got to get rid of unbelief, right. bitterness, right. strife, yeah. hate, yeah. contention, yeah. discord. Yeah. So you got to uproot these things so that you can walk in love in Christ. Yeah. Why? Because if you do that, there is something yeah. that's going to be unlocked in your life. Everybody say wisdom and revelation. Look at this. He says, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and height. Know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Why? That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. See, what you got to understand is God wants to fill you with something. No, 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 no. See, don't get filled with all the things of this world. Get filled with the anointing. No, you're not listening to me. You got to be someone who believes and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Because it's going to unlock something in your life. See, one of the things the Lord taught me how to do when I first got saved is I, I tarry for the Holy Spirit. See, once I got saved, it did not stop there. I didn't think I had it all together just because I received Christ Jesus in my heart. I began to go to my prayer closet. Hallelujah, somebody. I got in my prayer closet and tarried every single day until one day. My God, I need you to listen to me today. Oh, see, prophetess took me from church to church and led men of, uh, of valor, men uh, of upstanding, my God, in the gospel, lay hands on me and pray for me. And I still hadn't begun to speak with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I, I believed in Christ Jesus, but I hadn't yet begun to utter. And I, be, I was I was tarrying. So you got to tarry for this. See, somebody's got to grab this. You, you want to speak to principalities and powers you gotta tarry for the Holy Ghost Amen. you allow Christ to be in you Amen. now now I want you to see I can listen praise God today I can robo uh, hey, 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 undo my bow tie I, I can do all of those things today but, but I want you to understand something you have to desire to be filled with all the fullness of God. See, see, one of the things you want to tell you something. One of the things the Lord taught me, He said, Stop, don't dumb down this gospel. You know why? See, because, see, see, sometimes you can hear something come from uh, maybe someone of higher stature, and maybe their ministry or whoever they are ministering to is more mature. Uh -huh. That's the truth right there. 
So because they're more mature, you know, they can say certain things and the congregation just get it. But, but, but the Lord told me that in this house, uh-uh, not dumbing it down. You need to desire the Holy Ghost. You need to desire speaking in your heavenly language. You need to desire the authority to speak to principalities and powers. You got to desire to have love rooted in your heart. You got to desire it. Amen. See, to get to this point. See, 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 God wants to release something to you, but, but sometimes our hearts are too hard. Forgive your neighbor. Don't hold nothing against the pastor. Don't hold nothing against the first lady. Just don't let listen. Don't let it harbor in your heart. Don't listen. Don't hold no grudge against your brother or sister. Don't let that thing hold you back. I'm talking to somebody right now. Stop letting stuff hold. Stop all the boats like high. Don't let people hold you back. They listen. You you pray they care enough about you anyway. <laughs> listen, if you pray hard enough, maybe God will lay it on their heart to apologize. But in the event they don't, release them from your heart. Let it go, child of God. Get over it, son of God. Must move on, daughter of Zion. Why? Because if you're going to have the anointing in you, love has to abound. Why? Because if not, you'll speak negativity instead of what God said. My God. You ever heard that statement, misery loves? Oh, okay. See, it matters who you're hanging out with so that you can learn to stop agreeing with people that don't mean you no earthly good. That's good. That's good. That's good. No, 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 I'm serious here. Yes. Because, because, listen, we got to mature. Yes. Yes. That's what's wrong. See, and I know that. Because I'm sitting under some, some, some mighty men of valor. I'm sitting under some high anointing. And one of the things I notice is that you've got to mature. You got to grow up in the gospel. You, you come in a baby Christian, but you can't stay there. You cannot stay on Gerber for long. You've got to get off, my God, in the name of Jesus. You've got to get off of the soft food. At some point, you've got to start chewing some meat. You've got to allow your teeth to grow in and start chewing on the wrong We don't want to do that. We want the preacher to preach to us. Uh-uh. Stop letting the preacher preach you happy and you have no words. You gotta go back home and say there should be delay no longer. This right here, I don't need that. Get that out of here. This right here, uh -uh, I'm tired of that. Get that out of here. You know what? Not you right now, but you better get it together. It's all in the name of Jesus. Hey, Robo Tataba, you need to listen to the preachers today. At some point, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. At some point. At some point, it's time to grow up. At some point, it's time to stop pity packing. You want a million dollars, can't save two dollars. How, how, how do you want to be a millionaire but you don't save nothing? I'm serious. You gotta grow up in this. You walk in, Lord, do this and do that. He said, daughter, do this, do that. You, know, you, you want this blessing, listen, you got to release some stuff. You want this thing to rest on you, you have to agree with me. You gotta agree with this word. Christ is in you yes. to help you comprehend. Yes. Yes. 
Are you are you paying attention? Yes. Okay, this is what I'm showing you in your Bible. I'm not making this up. This is in your Bible. Yes. 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 Wow, yes. you're teaching good. Son. May be able to comprehend with all saints what's the breadth, length, depth, and height. Yes. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Yes. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I should have known. Yes. That you might be filled yes. with all the fullness of God. Yes. Somebody say, I'm filled yes. with all the fullness of God. Yes. Say it again, say, I'm filled yes. with all the fullness of God. Yes. You have to desire this. Yes. See, see, your Bible tells you. Whoa, 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 Go ahead. 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 Go See, we, we, listen, we can't be like the children of Israel just going in circles. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Are you listening? Yes, sir. At some point, you got to be done doing the same cycle over and over because you actually already know the outcome and it's not going to work. At some point, you got to be willing to break the cycle. Amen. 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 Now see, when you actually decide to take Canaan, don't be upset. Listen, don't get fearful when you start seeing giants. See, see. Now, now I'm going to really help you right here. See, when you kick the habit, you'll see the giant. I need you to listen with your spiritual ears. See, the reason you can't see the giant right now is because you keep going back to the same habit. You keep going back to the same thing. Uh, uh, the thing that's going to, uh, you know, uh, make you feel better for a moment. And see, what happens is this is what we do. We, we, we become, uh, uh, what's that word? Where, you know, uh, 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 you know, an inhibitor or... Uh, you know, that thing where, you know, like a crutch, if you will, uh, where, where instead of dealing with the real issue, yeah. you don't want to deal with the real issue. So, so since you don't want to deal with the real issue, you can't see the giant. And since you can't see the giant, now that you kick the habit, you're like, who is that? That's who's been sitting, That's who's been sitting there, feeding you the same stuff, keeping you doing the same thing. But look at your neighbor say, you shall overcome. Come on, find another neighbor say, you shall overcome. Come on, look at one more person say, you shall overcome. I need to hurry up, but you need to understand. You need to understand this thing. You, listen, you'll see the giant when you kick the habit. But you're relying on the anointing. Watch this. John 3, 34. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, man, you start running these giants right out of the land. Because God said you're supposed to walk into the promised land. You're supposed to dwell in the land of Canaan. You're supposed to land, dwell in the land of riches. My God, milk and honey. You're, you're supposed to have the good life. I take my good life. I'm recreating in Christ. I take the good life. You got to take it. You got to seize it. You got to lay hold on it. And say, I'm not letting it go. You remember with the Jacob who said, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to stop speaking this word. I'm not over the time. Until you do something in my life, Lord. I'm not going to give this up. Yeah. I'm not quitting. Yeah. I'm not giving up yeah. until I see the manifestation. Yeah. What did the psalmist say, my yeah. God, in Psalm 27? Yeah. I would have fainted yeah. Yeah. if I had not believed yeah. to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. 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 
Hey. See, you gotta have the anointing for this. You. Hallelujah. Hey. Lord. I gotta hurry up. Heard a testimony of a, from a rich man, but he's a Bible and Holy Ghost filled believer. He said his business wasn't successful. And he, he had opened a business, but he wasn't getting any business. He said he was calling all over the city, asking for contractors to, you know, assist him with his corporation. He said he couldn't get a phone call to save his life. And he said he fell on his face and asked the Lord, Lord, what am I doing wrong here? And he said the Lord so showed him four angels. And he said they were standing around him. And he said one of them was looking bored as all get out. Wow, wow. He said, he said, I know that look. He said, why is this angel looking bored at me, Lord? He said, because you won't speak my word. And he said, the moment he started speaking the word of God, he said, and all of a sudden he got business. One, one lady called and said, you know, hey, I need some work done over here. And he said, somebody else called. Next thing you know, he said, all the, are you listening to me? He said, all the contractors that told him and turned him down ended up being his employees. That I'm saying it because you got to start relying on what's in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, one of the things our spiritual father said on year one, he said, Listen, don't be mad at them. He laid hands on us right here, but no stage. Wow. He said, Don't be mad at them. That's right. Because they are tithers, yep. they are sowers, yep. they are givers. And the anointing that's on my life, I release it upon them. Amen. He said, I came to announce to this region, don't be mad when you see them elevated. He said, because there's something called momentum faith. And if you would just continue walking with God and continue seeking his understanding according to what's on the inside of you, you will see the manifestation of God's goodness. Yes. Are y'all listening? Yes. Hey, give me about three and a half minutes, I promise. I I'm going to get done. I, I mean, for where we're at. Okay, now, see, the Lord told me, he said, listen, don't dumb this word down. Don't, don't make it, you know, don't soften it up. Don't soften up the blood. Uh -uh. See, sometimes the heart has to be pricked in order for it to turn. So, you know, one of the things I used to hear is, you know, uh, you know, you speak in your heavenly language, you know, if you don't, it doesn't mean you're set, you're not saved. Okay. But and I was preaching that for the first couple of years because I, I had taught, I had learned that and I understood that, but I was speaking in my heavenly language. Right, yeah, yeah. But he said, I can't preach that to my congregation. Right, right, right. Because if I preach that to my congregation, there may be some people sitting there think, well, I'm saved, so I don't need to speak in tongues. Right, yeah. But the reality of it is if you don't speak in tongues, there's a communication with your father that you won't enjoy. So, so potentially I'm the one, I don't do it now, but I could have been the one that's holding a person up from their blessed place. Because I'm up here who, and God's given me the authority to command and speak in his name, but I'm holding a person back because I'm trying to make it easy for them. Yeah. But see, I've learned it, I can make it easy or I can make it hard. It's still up to the person. So why bring it down? No, we got to come up. I didn't expect no amen. It's all right. It's all right. Let me show you this. I didn't expect the amen right there, but it's okay. I didn't need it. The, the angels of the Lord. John 3, 34. Okay, I'm almost done here. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. He's talking about Jesus. For God gives not the spirit by measure to him. Now, I need you to understand this. The son of God has the Holy Ghost without measure. Are you listening to me? Where is Christ? Where is he? Where is he? 
So you, in you, you've got the anointing without measure. You're not listening to me. You can break a cycle of unbelief with this spiritual measure. You can cause restoration to hit your life with this measure. You can cause whatever. You can command money to come <laughs> with this measure. Are you listening to me? Okay. Now, I'm going to take you one more place and we're going to be done. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. See, what I said to you, see, one of the things the Lord showed me is that we've got to learn how to stand up. I'm talking about stand up in the spirit. We've got to stand up. We've got to learn how to stand up. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know you're agreeing. But I'm serious. We've got to reach a point where we're standing up in the spirit. God wants that thing for you. Yes. I don't know what it is you want from the Lord, but whatever it is, He actually wants it for you. Okay. But but we have to we have to step into uh, you know uh, the kingdom of God. We, we've got to we've got to be willing, my God, to try Him. Yes. 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 See, see, think about it. Isn't it interesting how Malachi three ten says, "Bring y'all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house." He says, "Prove me now herewith." One of the only few places in the Bible where God says, you can try me right here. Did he say that? He said, listen, see when I, my God, if I pour to open up the window and pour you out, Lord, you got room enough to receive. But, but, but you got to be willing to try me. You got to really take this word and say, Lord, I'm going to decree it. Lord, do whatever you need to do. Are you with me here? Because right. the anointing is in you without measure. But Amen. Have to many times, Paul said, uh, or John said, I have to decrease that the Lord may increase. Yep. Yes. Are you listening to me? Okay. Last text, Ephesians 5. Look at verse 14. Hallelujah. Wherefore, he says, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. And Christ shall give you light. Yes. See, this is why I'm saying these things to you because you have to receive Christ as in you. Yes. But you have to receive his light. Yes. See, we have to wake up. He's talking to church folks here. Yes. You got to wake up. Amen. Everybody say, wake up. Wake up. You have to be willing to wake up. He says, arise from the dead. Okay? Or dead works. Or, or, or you know, things that don't bring nothing good. He says, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Amen. Verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Look what happens. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. See, I'm showing you this, people of God, because you've got to learn how to, to find out what the will of the Lord is for your life. Are y'all listening to this? He'll make you a millionaire overnight if you believe him at his word. Hallelujah. But look at look at the command, verse 18. We're almost done. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit okay so I'm, I'm gonna stop right there but but I need you to begin to seek the anointing seek the anointed one okay God desires what you desire and he wants for you what you want as long as it lines up with the will of God but God told me to minister to you today. Thank you. Christ in you. Thank you. The hope of glory. Yes. So I want you to lift up your holy hands and stand to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to tarry. We're going to take 45 seconds here.
I want to give you a moment to tarry. And, and, and it means to really call on God. Okay? I want to give you an opportunity to call on God. You know? You know, sometimes, you know, you know, our believing can be wrong. And see, if our believing is wrong, our receiving will be wrong. And so... I want you, I want to give you an opportunity to go to the Father for yourself. There was a day I had to receive Jesus Christ myself. Okay, you know, we've been in many churches. People have been in many churches. You know, we've received the Lord over, you know, multiple times. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, received Jesus a thousand times. But, but, but God wants to bring us to a place. Where we really receive him in our hearts. Yeah. Okay. And he really wants you to tarry for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. It can't be lip service. That's true. Because see, God, Jesus taught us, listen, you, you know, you, you're saying this with your mouth, but it's far from your heart. Amen. Amen. And so I want you to lift up your holy hands today. I want to give you an opportunity. I'm not going to deny you the opportunity. To call on God. Your Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, mm -hmm. prospered, delivered, rescued, preserved, redeemed. So I want to give you an opportunity today. Lift up holy hands. I want to give you an opportunity to pray. I don't know if I have my prayer warriors are in here. I want to give you an opportunity. Listen, I want you to either begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Take your position. I want to give you, listen, people of God, there is someone here today. That really wants a new, a new walk, a new understanding, a new revelation, a, a new, a, a fresh start with Christ Jesus. There, there's someone here today that desires to arise from the dead so that Christ can give them light. There, there, there's someone here today that's, that's, that's tired of walking in darkness, tired of the lies of the enemy, being tormented by tormentors. God says, listen, I want to perfect those things that concern you. And so I want you to lift up holy hands today. Those of you, my God, if you if you need someone to stand in agreement with you today, I want you to come to the altar. I know that we are pressed for time right now, but I want to give you an opportunity. I want you to receive Christ Jesus. Listen, once and for all, make a conscious decision. Make a conscious decision that you're going to love God with all your heart. Make a conscious decision today to give him all of you. Give him your best. I want to give you that opportunity today. If that's you, I want you to come on up to the altar. Come on. I know, I know, I know you're out there. Come on. Come to the altar. Come on. Come on. Hands lifted. Now then maybe that's not you, but maybe, maybe you haven't had the evidence of speaking in tongues. Maybe you haven't uh, sought the Lord uh, to, to, to yes, manifest his glory amen. in your life. Hallelujah. I want to give you the opportunity today. I want you to lift up your holy hands. I, I want to give you an opportunity to come to the altar. Listen, the altar is a place where you call on God. It's not a place of embarrassment. It's not a place of being pointed out. It's, it's not a place where people can point their finger. It's, it's a place for you to get free. Amen. It's a place for you to allow the light to shine in your life. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I need you to pray today. I need you to pray. Lord, let light come into my heart. Lord, give me the evidence of speaking in tongues. Father, I desire more of you. Father, I want to see myself the way you see me. Father, in the name of Jesus, give me the evidence, Lord. I desire the evidence. Come on, I need you to lift up holy hands. Come on, speak in your heavenly language. And those of you that are here that are filled with the Holy Ghost, those of you watching us via live stream, come on, begin to speak in your heavenly language. Come on, call on God. Come on, call on God. You need Him to work out some matters in your life. Whether it be financial, physical, emotional, mental. Come on, give God room today. Come on, come on, remove the hardness out of your heart. Come on, remove it. Come on, remove the pain. Come on, let go of that pain. Come on, let go of that frustration. Come on, let it go. Come on, let it go. Come on, God wants to deliver you. I'm tired of the same cycle over and over and over again. Today, I take authority. Today, my God, my heart is willing. Today, I'm comprehending. 
God, you have more for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare I love you. Come on, prayer warriors, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, lift it up today. Come on, if you're praying for your relationship, praying for your marriages, praying for your children, come on, praying for your sisters, come on, you need to open up your mouth, Zion. Those of you watching this via live stream, if this word is ministering to you right now, I want you to lift up your holy hands. I want you to decree back to the Lord. I am a receiver of God's goodness. I'm a decreer of God's word. Come on, speak to the Father today. The Lord loves you. Come on, he cares for you. The enemy is defeated. He's a liar from the beginning. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, press in the spirit. Come on, press in the spirit. Come on, press in the spirit. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Father, I command a divine turnaround. Turnarounds are happening in my life. In the name of Jesus, I command divine turnaround. I command it's coming to pass. I command sorrow is turned to joy. I command toil turned to blessing. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, somebody agree in prayer. Come on, agree in prayer. Hail the Speak the message. Oh, no, but in the name of Jesus, 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 I declare a fresh start today. I declare a fresh start today. I declare a fresh start today. I declare a fresh awakening. I declare a fresh awakening. Come on, somebody pray. Come on, somebody pray. Come on, if you believe God, I want you to pray today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, we're not looky who. Come on, there's no reason to looky who. Come on, come on, lift up your voice. Come on, put your sights on the kingdom. Hallelujah. Come on, please God for your breakthrough. Come on, in the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, lift up holy hands. Come on. Hey, come on, pray, come on. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Come on, call on God. Come on, I, I. He said, I'll contend with those that contend with you. I'll save your children. Come on, if you need your children saved. Come on, come on, lift it up before the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you need to be set free. Come on, lift it up before the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you. In the name of Jesus.
some praise in the building. We're going to release you now. We're going to stay seated. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Every hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of impartation. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Father, we declare today, Lord, that they'll never be the same. Father, we declare, Lord, that they will speak to principalities and powers. Father, they will loose the angels of the Lord to fight on their behalf. Father, we declare Christ in them, the hope of glory. Father, as they leave this place today, Father, we declare the glory of the Lord yes. shall go with them. Until we meet again, we'll be careful to give your name and praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody said it's so. Somebody say amen. Amen. Come on, last time, clap your hands. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. We're going to let you go. Those of you watching this via live stream, we love you. Have a supernatural day in the Christ. God bless you. Bye-bye.